Fast Times at Richmond High. After watching it, not only is it relatable, it's also a reminder of how much I don't miss high school because things are super awkward, boring, especially history, being late. I feel like the main reason why I'm like wanting to schedule videos ahead, way ahead of schedule, is because of school. If you're late, there are consequences. The movie, it's about coming of age. There's different traits and characters in this movie that you might know from high school, and it's a lot of fun to watch. There's not a single character. This is more of a ensemble cast. I guess I'll go through each character, starting with- Causing a major disturbance on my time. <laughs> hand this is the teacher the very strict teacher who truly cares about his kids when something goes off or something isn't right he needs everything to be in order because that's just how he is and because of jeff he's the owner guy he's always late mr hand has an issue with them every time there's scenes with them they're always butting head with each other there's even a certain point where jeff orders pizza during class and everyone's like hey come take his pizza away stuff like that going to jeff's house which i don't think any teacher would do by the way this is here for movie sake he wants him to study about history help him for one last time before senior year is over and school's out shows that mr hand is a nice person he does care going to jeff's room seeing all of these naked posters mr hand is just strict because he wants his students to succeed and he was willing to go to jeff's house to be like hey might as well help you one more time do well for yourself which i thought was nice i didn't think that would happen I thought jeff was gonna resent mr hand i don't know and Jeff, he's the surfer, stoner, bro kid. Once he came on screen during that fast food joint where Brad works at, taking off his shirt with his other bros, character was gonna be a lot of fun. And he is a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, he ordered pizza during class. He's always high and stoned, not really paying attention to school at all. He has a dream about being a number one surfer. He's there for comedic more so than, you know, serious stuff. Aside from the end with Mr. Hand, he's there to make the audience laugh. He's driving like a car and he's speeding through the streets. Almost could have got himself killed with this other kid who's also high and smoking Jeff knows what he wants in life number one surfer but he's also sacrificing everything else in order to get there a single successful guy Brad is the character that doesn't know what he wants in life, and I loses everything. He has a girlfriend, and this girl is from A Nightmare on Elm Street as well. She's the one that gets killed upside down in that room. I didn't know that until I looked up the cast, but she says that she wants to be just friends, want to take a break from each other, which means that she wants to break up, saying it in a very nice, passive, aggressive way. After that, he has really nothing. He gets fired from a job by confronting a rude customer, and then he goes to like another job, and he gets fired at that as well, and then he goes to another job, and he has a car and whatnot, but he is clueless. He doesn't know where to go in his life he's lost and that's something that everyone can you know know about especially in high school it's like okay you either go get a job go to college or do both and some people go to college some people go somewhere else you know and there's that one infamous scene brad touching himself thinking about linda she comes out of the pool i will remember that scene for the rest of my life and then by the end a normal convenience store doesn't know what to do nicholas cage he's only in two scenes i think and despite this series being nicholas cage's filmography there's gonna be some movies where i'm like He's barely in the movie. And this is one of them where he works in the back of the fast food joint. And then he shows up one more time during the football game. I think that was him. And then that's it. That is completely it. So this isn't really Nicolas Cage's filmography. He's just credited as being in it. So there might be, you know, a handful of movies where maybe DiCaprio and Nicolas Cage, they're only in it for like 20 minutes or whatever. It was cool seeing him in here. Linda! Linda. Now she's the pretty girl. You know, she's the one giving Stacy advice on how to, you know, not bite and suck. Linda knows what she wants. She wants an older gentleman. She doesn't want anyone her age or younger. She thinks it's immature and she doesn't believe in the whole relationship thing. She keeps giving advice to Stacy on why it's not real. By the end of the film, Stacy thinks otherwise, but I thought because she was the pretty girl, she was gonna be a lot more mean, but she's not really mean. She's just more maybe not willing to accept or allow kind of relationships to, I guess, blossom as a loved one and like she's the same age as stacy she doesn't really know any better or maybe she's lying just like with mike she's kind of lying out of her ass school well, that's like yeah i know everything i've dated an older person yeah i know shit i mean sometimes girls just go hey why you got Mike, the prick. This is the guy that just likes to nut. Whenever he gets with Stacy, he just wanted to nut, making her pregnant, not knowing responsibility. He doesn't care. He was supposed to go to Stacy to get an abortion and whatnot. He knows about it. He learns it from Stacy about how she's pregnant. And instead of going and helping her and getting the money, he does nothing. He at least attempts to get money from his friends, but he no shows at all and a bit of a prick. And just like with Linda, he's the one that's giving advice to Mark on how to get girls and whatnot. And he's like being not responsible at all whatsoever. And after all, that happens prick is written on his car his locker everything and i guess he's a bit of a player as well all the girls giving him these looks and whatnot reaffirming that he just wants to nut i'm in love 
got Mark, who's the shy kid. I feel like everyone was this, unless you just have real high confidence. Kind of like Mark, where I'm like, I don't have the biggest confidence in asking a girl out. He has to ask Mike for advice or whatnot. But once he does, Stacy accepts. And because Stacy had an experience way earlier with an older gentleman, she thinks maybe this is, you know, how things should be. But once she's on a date with Mark, things are different. Things are a bit awkward, but she likes him, right? He like forgot his wallet, has to ask Mike to get money or whatnot. And once they go over to her house, things start happening. One thing that cracked me up was that he was going to give her a goddamn doll. Like once they start kissing, it's like, oh, I guess this doll is not needed. Like what the fuck are you going to give her a doll for? Cuts that off because he's scared. He doesn't know how to do it in bed, nor does he want to do it just yet. He's not ready. In response, Stacy's like, he's not interested in me. By the end, he does eventually get back to her. When a guy has an orgasm, how much comes out? you've got Stacy. She's the one that gets pregnant. I feel like gone through a lot. So she gets with an older gentleman because by advice from Linda to get with an older gentleman, they go to like this baseball field. They start doing it. And that's when she loses her virginity. Talks about how it hurt because of that experience with that older guy. She thinks that everything should be that. Maybe, you know, sex should be everything in a relationship. That date with Mark, she thinks that he's not interested because he like left her, stopped made way through that. And then when she goes out with Mike, she felt it. He nutted. And then pregnant starts happening. Mike starts freaking out. He's an asshole about it. He's a prick and she just go get the abortion i guess I have to get rid of this kid because they can't afford it probably expensive and it's also the one time and one moment where the movie gets somewhat serious it's all been you know a comedy all goofs and laughs and whatnot but this moment of like hey i'm pregnant was like a big oh shit i fucked up brad caesar and he promises to keep it a secret and he does being a good brother that he is granted this is something that you know you should probably tell your parents about and by the end she's come to the realization that she wants a relationship not just sex and whatnot a relationship real Realizing that she wants something more and then she sees mark one last time she's like hey come over here they talk they're going out again that's it it's a movie about teens in high school how their experience in high school make them who they are stacy realized that she wants something else mark always be that nice boy mike's a prick linda knows what she wants brad doesn't know what he wants jeff is still stoned and high a coming of age of all of these characters and how they end off even in the end credits show us what happens are just right down like jeff saved brooke shields like that's random okay linda's off in college living with a older gentleman mark and stacy are still in love but in an affair i think and then brad prevented a robbery so he was promoted to manager that's how things are like after high school and whatnot so in the end a pretty good coming of age teen comedy it's something that's relatable at least to some characters they're smoking weed but showing up that high in class i didn't know anyone like that in high school but maybe with the whole brad character not knowing what to do feel lost and maybe some other characters that people might resonate with but it's something that's relatable and still funny to this day so it's pretty damn good that's it for me this has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching.